Hi guys, welcome to this week's Top Catch Top Tip. Now this week I'm going to run you through how to rig a Bonds lure with the Platinum light gauge system that you saw us use with such great effect on this week's episode as we smashed 115 marlin in four and a half days up at the magical Wanganella Banks. These Bonds light gauge hooks are an absolute game changer for me. I've been using them for four seasons now and have had amazing success. So if you haven't tried them yet, I'd recommend getting out and giving them a crack. But anyway, we'll look at how to rig them up. First thing I do is take a Bonds light gauge hook. In this instance, an 8 bar O. That's my favourite size to use. They also come in a 9 bar O. I take a length of 90 kilo stainless steel cable and a 1.3 millimeter copper crimp I slide the copper crimp onto the stainless steel cable I then slide the end of the cable through the eye of my hook you can go either way I prefer to go through the front of the hook I then double the cable over pass it back through the copper crimp I have a little tag end coming out the top of the crimp and then I slide the crimp down to make a loop around the eye of the hook. You don't want your loop to be too small so that the hook can't swing. And you don't want it to be too big either. You just find a little happy medium. Make sure that tag is still hanging out the top of the crimp. Then I take my crimpers, put them onto the copper crimp. You can, I crimp right over the end of the crimp at the top and bottom, make sure it's crimped nice and tight. There I have the bottom hook on the loop. Then I need to determine the length of stainless steel cable that I'm going to want. I take my hook. I position it at the bottom of my lure's skirt and I want to make sure that that eye is up within the skirt of the lure so it's in line with the International Game Fishing Association rules. And then I slide my fingers up until I find the bottom of the hook lock. All these Bonds lures come with a rubber hook lock so that you can slide your top crimp up into there it locks your hook set in place and it'll mean that your lures are always running in the perfect position in your lure. We'll get, there'll be more on that later. I lay my hook and cable down on top of the lure. I slide my fingers up the cable to the base of the hook lock. Then I estimate another 10 mils. I take my wire cutters. And I cut the cable. And there I have my bottom hook ready to go. I then take another copper crimp. And I slide it onto the stainless steel cable. For these lures, I'm ru running a 180 degree inline hook set. Which means the hooks are going to be in line with each other but the top hook is going to be 180 degrees different to the bottom hook which means I'll have one hook pointing that way and one hook pointing that way. So in order to make sure that those hooks are in line I create a loop and I want that loop to be in line with the eye of the hook. Once I'm happy that I have got that in line I just slide the copper crimp up the stainless steel cable I make sure there's still a little tag end at the bottom and I make another loop about the same size as the one at the other end that's attached to the bottom hook and again I crimp that closed I crimp right over the end of both copper crimps squeeze that nice and tight and there we have the bottom hook and the stainless steel 
wire on which it's on. The next part of the rig, I take some Bonds heat shrink. This heat shrink is brilliant because it has a heat activated adhesive inside it. So when you heat it up and it shrinks, it releases the adhesive and it'll actually stick to whatever you're heat shrinking it on. I cut about 10 mils off. I need two pieces of that, both about 10 mils long. I take one of my pieces of heat shrink. I slide it over the end of the hook and up to the eye of the hook and I put it approximately halfway over the eye. Take my heat gun. And I start shrinking the heat shrink onto the hook. You'll find that as you heat it up, it'll want to slide back down the hook. All I do once I've heated it up a little bit, as I just lick the tips of my fingers and I keep pushing it up so that it's covering half of the eye of the hook. You'll find that the hook will start to heat up. You can either tough it out or use a peg to hold it. I find it's not too much of an issue. I just keep licking my fingers and sliding that up. That heat shrink has shrunken up now. So I'll just keep making sure that's in position for about 30 seconds until it's cooled and hardened. And once it's done that, that adhesive inside the heat shrink will have cooled down and it'll hold your shrink perfectly in place. I then take my other 10 mil piece of heat shrink and slide it down the length of the cable and again I'm covering about half the loop of the cable get my heat gun heat that up shrink that down nice and firm over the crimp once that's shrunk down lick my fingers again and pinch it down Make sure it's in position so that it's covering about half of the loop that you made in your stainless steel cable. Again, give it about 30 seconds to harden. The adhesive will harden and it'll glue that perfectly in place. Now the reason we're doing this is because you want your bottom hook to be swinging in the lure as you troll it behind your boat. But what you don't want to do is for that hook to roll over the top of itself and those two loops to get snagged together and your hook to be running funny. So if you use the heat shrink to close those two holes, it'll prevent any sort of tangle up in those two loops. So that looks pretty good. I then take my heat shrink and I cut a slightly longer piece. This one about 30 mils long. And I take another one of my Bonds Platinum Light Gauge 8 Barrow Hooks and I lay it on my stainless steel cable with the eye of that hook and the loop of the hook in line with each other. I'm running a 180 degree inline hook set which means both my hooks are in line with each other but they're 180 degrees different so one's pointing up and one's pointing down so I make sure the loop in the cable and the eye of the hook are flat against each other and I lay the hook on the cable with the point of the hook coming away from the cable. I then slide my 30 mil piece of heat shrink over the hook and the stainless steel cable and I have it nicely positioned in the middle of the hook. Take my heat gun, shrink that down
make sure I'm all happy with the position of the stainless steel cable on the hook make sure my rig's in line which it is as you can see and there we have a hook rig just about ready to go there's one more very important thing to do because we're using very light gauge hooks they will get electrolysis in the water and you can lose that point very sharp point on the tip of your hook in order to stop that happening I take some bonds zinc tape comes in little squares pre-cut squares I take one square I cut it in half and I wrap half of that self-adhesive zinc tab around the shaft of each hook and that'll act as a sacrificial anode exactly like you have on your outboard motors or your inboard motors and it'll prevent the electrolysis that occurs affecting the hook I check these zinc anodes after every day's trolling I normally find that I replace them after a day's game fishing and it keeps those hooks nice and sharp and definitely extends the life of your light gauge hooks so once you put that zinc tape on your hook rig is ready to go and now we need to put it inside the lure in this case inside this awesome custom bonds cracking lure so depending on what sort of leader you're running on your Shimano Tiagras I'm running wind on leaders so I only use about three meters of 250 pound leader it's up to you to make sure that your leader length is within IGFA rules I roughly measure three meters I cut that off and I pass it down through the hole in the top of the lure comes out the other end I then take a 1.7 mil alloy crimp and I slide that onto the end of the leader that I just passed down through the lure I slide it onto the leader I then take some bonds chafe tubing this is two millimeter chafe tubing it's perfect for the 250 pound leader and I fold it to make a small loop I check that I can make a small loop I pinch it off and I cut a piece of chafe tubing I take the chafe tubing I then slide that on to the leader and then I take my hook rig and I pass the leader through the eye of the hook making sure that I also go through the loop that I made in my stainless steel cable you can go either way again my preference is to go through the front of the hook I then pass that piece of chafe tubing through both loops it will sit there nicely and I take the end of my leader and pass it back up through the alloy crimp I then lick the tips of my fingers and take a lighter and gently put the tip of the leader just up to the flame of the lighter just to you see the end of the leader start to bulb out I then lick my other finger and just press that still soft end of the leader down and make a nice little mushroom on the end of the leader and you'll see that even before I crimp down my crimp that that little bulb there will stop that leader pulling through the crimp I then take the chafe tubing I slide it up hard against the side of the crimp that I've pulled that melted bulb down to I take the other end and I pull that up tight that chafe tubing will loop over I pull both ends of the chafe tubing up hard against the crimp and you'll have a 
nicely looped end of your leader. I then take my crimpers and I position them on the alloy crimp. When I'm crimping the alloy onto the mono, I'm very careful to make sure I don't crimp right up at the end of the crimp. I leave a little lip. That means that as I crimp down, that lip will flare out and it'll take any of those sharp edges away from the mono. I do the same at the other end, again leaving that lip, making sure I flare the ends of the crimp away from the leader. And there we have the hook rig on the end of your leader. Now I want to stiffen the top hook up because I want it to always stay in that position. I don't want it to come off to the side of that loop. So what I do is I take some self-amalgamating tape. You can get this at any electrical wholesaler and I cut about 60 mils of that off. Give it a little stretch. It's got a little protective cover on that. You take that off, that'll just break away. And then I just spend a couple of seconds stretching that tape, warming it up, makes it a bit more malleable, easy to use. Then I take my tape, I start on the hook, about halfway down the shaft of the hook, I pinch it off and I stretch that amalgamating tape and loop it around the hook on top of itself and when you stretch it it'll stick onto itself and that's what will keep it in place I do a couple of wraps and then I start wrapping it up the hook towards the eye I go up and over the eye of the hook and the loop you've made in your leader and I keep going up to I'm about halfway up that crimp. You don't want to go any further than that. Once I'm about halfway up the copper crimp, I do one or two wraps back on itself with the self-amalgamating tape. I pinch it down and I stretch and snap the last little bit off and that will snug that tape up nicely. It'll keep that rig nice and stiff. I then take my lure, I slide it down the leader towards your hook rig and I make sure that that top hook is pointing towards the top of the lure. If you're using a flat faced or a cup faced lure, it doesn't matter, but on these angle faced lures, you want your top hook facing upwards towards that furthest out point of your angled face lure. I slide that crimp up into the hook lock that we talked about earlier, pull the leader, you'll feel that alloy crimp clip into the hook lock and then that hook will be nicely set. You can adjust it just so it's sitting in line with the top of the lure. Lay your lure out and you'll see that the, bottom, the eye of the bottom hook will be sitting just inside the skirt of the lure as per IGFA regulations. And there you have a perfectly rigged lure. All there is left to do now is put a loop at the other end of your leader so you can clip it onto your swivel. To do that, I take another 1.7 millimeter alloy crimp. I slide it onto the other end of my leader I take my chafe tubing and I make a loop. For this end you want a slightly bigger loop, probably about 20 mils of chafe tubing will do it. I pinch that to measure and I slide that onto my leader. I take the end of the leader and I pass it back through the alloy crimp. Then I take my cigarette lighter and I make another bulb in the end of the leader just like I did at the other end. Again, I slide that bulb down to the top of the crimp. I take the chafe tubing, I push it up hard against the crimp 
at the side where I've just pulled that bulb against and I pull that leader down tight and make a nice loop in the end of my leader and again I crimp that down making sure to leave the lip on each end of the alloy crimp and there we have one rigged Bonds light gauge lure all you need to do now is go drag that lure in a bond spread behind your boat and get ready to fight a beautiful striped blue or black marlin all the bonds gear that we've seen today the light gauge hooks the lures the leader and all the rigging gear is available at bondslures.com or your local top catch store